How are you guys doing? I hope you're holding up okay during the uh, coronavirus quarantining that we're all doing right now. Um, this was some very bad news. Uh, this was something that came out about ASCAP uh, in the last couple of days that they will be basically, one, delaying a lot of the royalty distributions, and also two, preparing people for a big dip in their royalties coming in. I'm definitely going to be affected by this for the first couple of years of my career. I had a lot of tracks registered with ASCAP and I kept them with them. So they've been paying me out those royalties every single quarter since. So this is definitely going to take a hit for me. So I'm definitely going to feel this pain a bit. Um, but I want to just go through this letter that the CEO um, sent out to all of the uh, members. <clears throat> kind of explain what they said, obviously, let's make sure we get the facts right, and then what my overall thoughts are um, and how we can basically move forward from this um, and what we can do to prepare maybe right now if we're going to be taking a hit. Um, for those of you that are not making any royalties yet <clears throat> and you're signed up with ASCAP, obviously, this isn't going to make much of a difference for you because you're not making the royalties yet. But for those of you that, you know, you rely on these royalties to really pay your, uh, your bills right now, this is going to hurt for a couple of quarters um, for sure going down the pipeline. So, and I'm definitely going to be asking some for some information from some of you. So if you guys have some uh, information, we can kind of collaborate on this and share knowledge. And then I can, if there's something that I get wrong or some information I didn't have, please correct me, email me, comment on this video. And I'd love to, um, you know, put up new videos and try to get you guys as, as informed as I possibly can. Uh, just so you guys know, if you're following along with Sync60, I'll post the third video for Sync60 in the description box of this video. It's where we talk about healthy habits, which is more important than ever right now. We're gonna be quarantined for a while and it's really tempting to just sit around and do nothing, watch TV. You really gotta do all that you can to try to create a very healthy lifestyle for yourself. Get those healthy habits going well. Sleep, exercise, and eating. You know, you get those th three things right and you will find that you can still stay productive, you can still stay very motivated even when confronted with some negative news like this. This is the real challenge of what we're going through right now. We're gonna be getting negative news from all sides of our life and where I'm feeling it, I know you guys are feeling it, but this is what pressure does, is it's either going to break you and make you just sit around and feel hopeless and give into despair, or it's going to make you double down and work even harder and pursue new opportunities, look for new ways to um, you know, increase your skills, make money, whatever it is you want to do right now. This is what's going to make or break most of us coming forward for the next years, maybe even decades. So this is still an opportunity, even in the face of this negative news, this is still something that you can't control this, I can't control this, so what are we going to do about it? Just you know, wallow in, in pity about it? Or should we sort of figure out a way if we can't control it, let's adapt, let's go in a different direction, let's try to do something else, or let's try to get a, a supplement our income in some ways um, before, you know, uh, you know, we, uh, we just give into despair, because that's the last thing that we should be doing. Okay, if we're alive, if you're breathing, you should be productive, you should be working, you should be looking for opportunities. Um, even if you don't have all the answers right away, you should still be trying. Okay, that's what I really want to get across here. So this is the um, email. And this is the letter that the CEO put out um <clears throat> so they're just kind of talking about that it's going to basically have some negative impacts on all of us and and obviously we are all aware of that so uh, i'm just going to go through this letter <clears throat> first of all just explain what they're saying what it means and how it's going to impact some of you that are already making some income from ascap okay now as opposed to this BMI paid their royalties out two days early now i haven't heard any updates directly from BN bmi yet about you know, preparing their members for any dip in royalties. So, and there's a couple of questions I have about their, their system. And some of you may be watching this video might have the answer to that. So please watch and comment or email me and let me know what you, uh, what you know about that. Okay. So while there are many un unknowns at this time, I would like to take this opportunity to explain what we can do. She's supposed to put do about how the negative impact of this virus will impact your ASCAP distributions. Okay. First, it is important to understand that ASCAP distributions are made on a cash basis, okay? The money we collect in a quarter is paid out the same quarter, less the cost of operation. As opposed to an accrual basis, money collected would be held out and paid two or three quarters later. So that's one of the questions I have had. I was looking into this. I wasn't even actually aware of the differences between these two um, <clears throat> systems between, or at least how I didn't know actually that ASCAP did this, that they were actually paying you the actual distributions that they were getting from that uh, current quarter. The question I have, and that maybe some of you guys can answer or help answer or do some research as well is, does BMI use the cash basis or do they use the accrual uh, basis where they're actually basically paying you from previous quarters? Um, and maybe that's why, if that, my hunch is that they are doing that and that's why they were able to pay us early. Um, and I haven't heard this kind of a response from them yet. I mean, we'll see what comes out in the future. But this is obviously the first that I've heard from ASCAP, um, letting their members know that they are the cash basis. And so because this quarter they're going to get hit, they're letting you know that there's going to be some changes for the, um, the payment schedule and the amounts that they're going to have to be able to get out. In other words, 
We calculate distributions based on current revenues, not past revenues. <clears throat> in normal times, this is a great benefit to ASCAP members as you receive your money faster. During the crisis, as we see more and more of our licenses uh, pay us pay us start to feel the impact of the economic downturn this translate into less revenue for ASCAP and less money available for distributions for our members we have already been contacted by numerous licensees who are attempting to pay less pay late or not pay at all so this would be anything from you know tv networks to uh, public venues to you know um, grills restaurants anything where there's going to be royalties generated a lot of them are saying hey we just got hit big time by this um, and so we're going to have to either reduce what we're paying you guys, maybe do a delay in what we usually pay you, or we just can't pay you at all. So we basically just have to say, sorry, we can't pay anything, you know, for this current quarter or this current um, period. So that's what they're telling you. That's what they're seeing right now. <clears throat> While you will receive your distributions from ASCAP during this health and financial crisis, we can no longer provide you with a date certain in advance of each, each distribution. So I saw some people that were thinking like, oh, that's it. They're not going to pay royalties anymore. That's not what they're saying. Okay, they're saying they will pay you, but they can't just give you in advance. It will be on this date. They're going to have to basically play this quarter by quarter to see how they're doing with their vendors, who's paying them, who's paying them on time, who's paying them less, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so they're just letting you know that it's not going to be as predictable as it was before. The reason for this is that our licensee revenue will become increasingly variable as a business remain closed and the advertising market, which drives revenues from television, radio and cable continues to be negatively impacted. Every category of ASCAP collections will be negatively impacted, <clears throat> including television, cable, radio, airlines, hotels, bars, grills and restaurants. While everyone is streaming um, music and movies from home, not everyone in this country will be able to afford a subscription of entertainment services and that will shift the uh, impacted revenue. 25% of ASCAP revenues come from outside of the United States. So these are your foreign PROs uh, that are going to be paying you those uh, royalty distributions. And COVID-19 hit many of those territories before it hit the U.S. So ASCAP revenue impact will be global, meaning that your royalties domestically will also be impacted and the international ones, okay? <clears throat> We will make many key um, distribution funding decisions later than usual once we have knowable facts of our revenue collections each calendar month in each quarter. What this means for you as a writer or publisher member is that your distributions may be delayed as compared to last year. For example, this is what they did just recently. The ASCAP writer distribution was previously scheduled for April 6th and now will be paid on April 28th. So they did have to push that back a few weeks and I know that caused a lot of um, uh, stress and concern for a lot of ASCAP uh, members. This is because we had to go through a collection cycle of March uh, 31st, April 1st payment due dates to determine a, uh, accurate cash flow before finalizing the funding pool and processing hundreds of thousands of distribution files for payment processes services. So basically, they're just saying everything's getting delayed. They're getting all these sort of excuses and these non-payments or like reduced payments from their vendors. So everything's been disrupted. And so they're basically just saying it's going to take us some time to reassess what is our global and our, or our um, also domestic funding pool of all the money that we're going to be distributing to all our writers. So just give us, be patient with us, give us a little bit of time because we have to basically sort that out. It's going to be different, definitely reduced from what we normally do. And then we have to obviously make that adjustment to all of our writers moving forward. So, um, so let's see. The good news is that as a result of the delay, the April 28th writer distribution will be fully funded as we had originally anticipated. Okay, so at least you guys know if you've been looking forward to, um, you know, this payment on the 28th, you were expecting on, in early April, they're saying that it's going to be fully funded um, as anticipated. I know that this is not, uh, not good news and you've already been bombarded with bad news every day for weeks, but I think it's important that we are all prepared for the future as we try to limit the number of surprises. So I do like the fact that they're just being honest and transparent about this and saying, this is what we're doing this is how it's going to impact you and they're just sort of laying it out there for you as opposed to not putting out statements like this and kind of keeping people in the dark as to why is my money not showing up where is it why is it going to be reduced all that good stuff so um or bad stuff rather so i like that they're at least being um um just transparent with it so this is elizabeth matthews who's the ceo of uh, ascap so i do appreciate that um just being laying it out front this is what we're going to deal with so i know some of you are going to really take a hit on this because your royalties have, especially for me as well um have been one of the lifebloods of our our income so i do know this is going to negatively impact a lot of you guys that are especially already making your income through ASCAP. Now, moving forward, is this the end of royalties? Is it the end of the licensing business? Of course not. You guys know that I've gone through so many of these, you know, seemingly really, really negative, and this is definitely just a negative bit of news, you know, from the Discovery Networks thing to the Netflix buyout deals. So 
we take hits all the time in this business and there's always these bits of bad news and this is definitely a major one. I'm not trying to downplay that at all, but it's certainly a temporary setback, okay? So we are going to be recovering from this. We are, nothing, you gotta remember, why did this all happen? Was there a, a fundamental piece of our economy that was broken? Um, you know, we had a massive unemployment problem. Was there, you know, was there a bubble like in the 2008 financial crisis? No, I didn't see any evidence of that. If you guys see any evidence of that, correct me. You know, send me an email, comment below. Let me know that I'm completely wrong on that. But I don't see this as an economic problem at all. I see it as a medical problem that has basically paused the entire uh, economy, right? Almost every aspect of the economy is just put on pause right now. So what we have to do is we have to ride out the storm until we can get back to work. And I think that's coming sooner than later. Um, we'll see obviously with the numbers and the infection rates and the death rates and the hospital impact um, of what's happening. But um, I'm, I'm not following every bit of news like 100% because I'm finding that like you can listen to one news source and then listen to the next and it's 180 degrees completely different information. So um, from what I'm seeing, uh, there are are some encouraging signs that the quarantining and the sort of shutting down of the economy is actually having a beneficial impact on the curve and it's actually flattening the curve in many uh, areas there's still a lot of areas that are hit very hard but we're definitely getting we're learning a lot more about this uh, virus we're learning about how to treat it how to basically slow down that curve and how to make sure that we're um, getting everybody the medical resources and cranking up the production of those medical resources uh, in a really quick manner so i'm still very optimistic and very hopeful that we're going to bounce back and yes i do believe that once this bottoms out whatever that's going to be whatever whatever that timeline is going to be the minute that they start to ease up on the quan uh, quarantining kind of let some people go back into the economy and start working again of course you know taking precautions distancing wearing masks all that kind of stuff you're going to see this just pent up energy rush back into the world and back into the economy because you got to remember it's not like all of the businesses were bombed or, or blew up or something like that all the offices are just sitting there empty, <clears throat> ready ready for all the employees and all the workers and all the business owners to run back into them and start producing and, and providing services for the world again and for their local community. So it's all just sitting right there, ready to go. We're just basically waiting. And I know that every day that passes, we get a little bit more anxious and a little bit more uh, pent up about it. But what that's going to do is it's like, I see it as this energy building up where we really want to work. We want to get back to our daily lives. We want to get back to normal, right? So the minute you give us a little bit of a green light on that, you better believe there's going to be this rush of energy and excitement and enthusiasm to go back to work. So I see this, I, people have been talking about the V thing. I do see that as a very likely outcome. Of course, I don't know the future. Nobody knows the future. You shouldn't be taking anybody's financial advice or anything like that. Do your own research, you know, or act accordingly. Um, but for those of you that are going to be negatively impacted by the slowdown in some of these, especially here with ASCAP, we'll see you know, what, what BMI says and what their update is. Um, and if, if this is like your primary source of income, you know, I hate to be this bearer of, of this news, but you will have to probably find alternative sources of income right now. You know, if this is the thing that was really paying your bills. And the best thing I can think right now is if you have a car or you can get access to a car and you're young and healthy and you feel like you can take that risk to be out and do some delivery services, delivery services are blowing up right now. Uber Eats, uh, Postmates, DoorDash, there's tons of them and everybody is ordering through those food delivery services and also just going to like a Walgreens or a Walmart and buying essentials and delivering it to people's houses. So I know it's not your dream job. It's not what you want to do. But if there's a point of view where you're like, you know what, I think I'm going to be negatively impacted by this. I guarantee you can go to any one of those companies and I'll actually put the links below so you guys can click on them directly if you want to sign up. You can be a driver with pretty much any one of them. I think, you know, obviously having a car, having some insurance, uh, having your driver's license, you got to do all that stuff uh, and be um, and obviously be young and healthy. Okay, I don't recommend any of you, any of you that have health complications or you're elderly or you're going to be a risk being out in public and even just even if minimal interaction, just picking up, you know, like an order from a restaurant and delivering to somebody's house. Be smart about that. Take your own risks. But there's going to be a lot of uh, the gigging industry that's going to be very, very lucrative right now. Um, and so if you have to do that for a couple of weeks just to supplement your income, you know, if it, if it helps you stay productive and stay in sort of that, um, let's, let's just go find an opportunity kind of a mindset, go for it. Okay. If you feel like, Hey, you've got some savings and you know, a couple of months of, of maybe a lower income uh, or delaying for your, your royalties isn't going to impact you too much. I'd say this is a perfect opportunity to build your catalog. Um, libraries right now, what I'm seeing from the libraries that I talk to that I'm interacting with that I know personally even though a lot of them have had a little bit of a slowdown or maybe a big slowdown in those custom opportunities because you know no new productions really are happening right now and not a lot of ads are being made. Some still are though. There's still some that if you can create a sort of animated ad, 
you can do that completely remotely. So there's still work being done right now, guys. Don't think that the entire industry just completely shut down. There are people that are looking for how to adapt right now in this current market. And the smart ones are realizing that there's more eyeballs on TV streaming services than ever before. So there are definitely some advertisers that are pulling out right now and kind of just cooling it. But there are also others that are like, are you kidding me? I want my product out in front of as many eyeballs right now as I possibly can. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that a lot of people are looking at these things right now. So it's a double-edged sword. And um, uh, what I found from most libraries that I know, like I said, is that they are taking this as an opportunity to beef up their catalog. And so that means they are accepting new music from their current writers or maybe even new writers um, because they're realizing, well, if I can't pitch music to my clients right now because everything's kind of slowed down a bit, what are we missing in our catalog? What do we need more of? What, how can I get a competitive edge for when the economy opens up and I want to start getting some new clients? What is the one thing that I think we've been needing? We need to. We never had the time to do it because we were so focused on these opportunities right in front of us. So you better believe that I'm. I have. I'm barely able to keep up. Excuse me with the amount of work that I'm getting from the libraries that I've currently partnered with. Even just the other day, I had four different styles of music that the library I'm working with, they're looking for, and they want full albums. They want more than full albums for all four styles because they're looking down the pipeline at what they're going to be doing once this thing clears up. So it's still a very active industry. And mo for the most part, the licensing business has always been a, an internet-based business for the last definitely 10, 12 years I've been in it. Um, it's just, you know, websites, emails, texting, calling, sending files through Dropbox or WeTransfer. Um, it's always, for the most part in my career, been an internet-based based business. So there's still activity. There's still things going on. And always remember that it's in times of crisis when people, when the, when the herd feels very kind of like, oh, you know, everything's kind of shut down. This is terrible. There's just this morose depression kind of like creeping into people's minds that's when there's going to be massive opportunities for those that are looking for them and are willing to work and not going to give in to the despair and kind of just give up on things and just admit defeat so that's my choice you can make your own choice do whatever you want okay but i want to be at least one voice an encouraging voice for those of you that are yes we're facing all this we're going to feel this pain together but it's not going to break my spirit you can't break my spirit with this i'm still moving forward i'm still going to produce music i'm still going to do everything i can to look forward to new opportunities new places that's why i'm getting into you know these kind of weird videos i'm putting up on my channel lately about vr and doing these vr chats because I see there's something big happening here. And if we're not looking for it, if we're not jumping in, if we're not playing with new technologies, looking for these opportunities, still improving our skills, producing music, we're wasting this incredible opportunity that's right in front of us. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have further insights, information, tips, any sort of knowledge that you think that would be beneficial for me to share with my subscribers, comment below or email me, jesse at syncmymusic.com. I hope you're all very healthy and very safe.